Hi guys, welcome back to OC Avery. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to keep your birds healthy and active through the winter months. So as it's coming now winter, we're getting snowfall. Occasionally, we're getting those darker mornings and we're getting those cooler, frosty mornings. Yeah, you might be able to see my breath right now. So it's all those sort of things that we're gonna be looking at today is how to keep them active, how to keep them healthy, and hopefully something you can learn from this. I'm gonna be showing you my examples with the native finches and the canaries, but this also applies to native softbills, foreign softbills, parakeets, anything like that, that you keep in an outside aviary and even in, in bird rooms like this. So hopefully there's something you can learn from today's video. So with me keeping mainly native birds, I'm always looking at the wild birds, I'm going out bird watching, we're trying to observe what the birds do in winter and throughout all of the seasons to be honest, uh, and try and learn and pick up some, some ideas from that of how we can replicate that in captivity for our captive birds and see how we can improve how we keep them and you know encourage that natural behaviour. So I do a multitude of different things throughout uh, the winter and, and the breeding season and what have you to try and revert them to to that that natural sort of wild state and, and getting them to try and get the best result out of them as possible and one of the things that I do with that is giving them different things for enrichment so the first thing I want to talk about is millet now millet is a great it's a foreign seed uh, so it's not something the native birds would be used to but it's ne nevertheless it's something that they readily do take to so I put millet in for them and that's mainly in the cages and that's that's red poles especially, the red poles love it, siskins love it, goldfinches love it. It goes in for the crossbills, the bullfinches, the canaries as well. They all seem to enjoy it, even you know the twites and things like that. So they all enjoy it and what we're doing that is we're putting the millet in the cages and the birds are able to hang on that and they're able to pull at it and pull the seeds out. Now what we're trying to do is make them work for the food there and revert them to how they would be in the wild so the wild so the wild birds you may find commonly will hang on things like acer and pine branches and pine nuts and pine cones and stuff like that to try and fetch seeds and insects out so the best that way that we can replicate that in captivity is using is using millet sprays birds really do enjoy uh, eating that millet spray the tugging at it the pulling at the seeds and it's just something that keeps them active and keeps them busy not only that but it's good for them you know the, the bones and the muscles because they're using different muscles that they wouldn't usually use when they're just working on the perch they're hanging upside down they're pulling at it and they're doing different things that help and keep them fit keep them acting keeping them healthy so I always try and offer natural branches to the birds as well and natural things like that. So if there's an acer tree, I'll go and chop some acer off and there's all the little nuts on that that the birds will enjoy pulling at. You can use pine, so the pine will be really good for the birds. Pulling at all of that, pulling at the, uh, the pine cones and fetching different insects and seeds out of there like that. The only thing I'm not doing at the moment is it, it do, is doing a lot of that with the, the wild branches um, and, and, and like using conifer, pine, acer, stuff like that because of the avian flu. So do be careful if you're going to do something like that. I don't want to take any out of, you know, off, off a tree that I don't really know and, and I just don't want there to be any contamination. So I've been keeping that minimal at the moment, but what I have got is some apple branches that I saved uh, from the summer. So we've put those in for them and, and they're enjoying that keeping busy on that and it keeps exercising the feet as well uh, but obviously if you can offer things like pine and um conifer and things like that they do like to chew them as well especially if you do keep crossbills you'll know about this uh, but they eat anything that's wood they strip it completely of all the bark and, and they enjoy chewing it like that so that's something else that is really quite important if you're keeping crossbills uh, but nevertheless i do offer that to all the birds when it's safe to do so so for some of the birds, and this goes for my bullfinches, which is the main one, but if you keep something else like wax bills, uh, what, sorry, wax wings, you might keep uh, crossbills as well, you can do that with, you might keep brambles, uh, or anything else like that, even, you know, even soft bills, uh, sort of thrushes and, and what like that, is rowan berries and fruit. The birds really do enjoy having stuff like that. So rowan berries, I buy them in a dried form. It means that I can store them and keep them for when I need to give them the birds. The bullfinches will get... Uh, 
uh, a few rowan berries per week. I don't try and overdo it because I don't want them to be having too much, uh, but I do want to make sure that they get enough. Now, bullfinches in the wild would go around and they're, they're quite common in for orchards and where there's a lot of fruit. So offering them this is a good idea uh, because it's looking at how they would naturally be uh, and trying to bring that in as much as possible. Something that's been told to me and pointed out is raspberries and cranberries and stuff like that. So they do really like those. So if you can get them fresh, then I do recommend you try them for that as well. Uh, and I will be giving like raspberries and stuff like that and fruits to the bullfinches in the breeding season. Uh, but through the winter months, they always do have access to that off of off of uh, fruit trees, fruit bushes and stuff like that. So I'm trying to offer that in, in, in captivity as well. But other fruits as well, you can do apples. So I'll chop up some apples into slices and I'll put them in the cages. Not only bullfinches, but the red poles, the canaries, green finches, anything like that. They do enjoy them, uh, but you'll find that some will take them more readily than others. Uh, so like I said, with the bullfinches, if you keep wax wings as well, I know that in the wild and they come over to Britain from Scandinavia and they come for the fruits that are on our trees so it's quite common to see them about doing that uh, and if you do keep them for something like that it's definitely worth a try. To encourage your birds onto something like that, well, it doesn't have to just be the plain fruit. So if let's say you chop up an apple and you've got apple slices, the birds aren't that keen on taking it or you don't know if they will. Well, it's usually moist when you've chopped it up anyway, as long as you don't leave it out too long. And then you can dip that in some in uh, in some wild seeds, some finer seeds. So I do this with blue moor. The blue moor is a really good seed for them. It's an antioxidant. It's, uh, it's actually a, a natural sedative as well. So it does keep the birds calm. It uh, helps them you know, in multitude of ways so you can always dip your apple slices in that put it in for the birds and when they're picking it that they'll take the apple and then quite readily do wean themselves onto it so then there's the substrate that you offer the birds as well so in the cages i'm using easy bed which is a wood chip uh, and then out in the flights we've got astroturf down but what i've started to do is using bird sand uh, bird sand is usually ready, readily available from a lot of seed suppliers i get mine from bjf feeds in sheffield uh, and we buy that in bulk about 25 kilos for only a few pounds so it's really useful uh, and cheap like that and i'll put that down in the flights for the birds uh, and i do pop it in the cages as well it's got grit with it so it's good for the birds uh, it, sort of digestive system as well uh, and they're picking up minerals and things like that uh, but it's also ideal to have a, a substrate that the birds can then uh, forage for food in so if you keep something like uh, thrushes let's say you keep blackbirds then uh, a load of leaves is definitely something useful the birds will naturally uh, flick through the, the, the leaves uh, rummage through them looking for insects and stuff so if you do keep something like that perhaps chuck a load of seed, uh, leaves on the floor chuck some seed and corn in it or even chuck something like mealworms in for it and give the birds uh, something to work for the working for the food and it's keeping them active keep, keeping them healthy like that for the finches well i do very similar so i'll put sand down on the floor and i'll throw some mealworms down or i'll, I'll throw some um uh, so, so, sort of conditioning seed, finer seeds, niger onto the floor and, and they, they're generally quite happy uh, foraging about and, and looking for that food in that way. And it's good to see them active like that as well. You want them scratching like chickens uh, as something that Keith Ferry has mentioned in uh, in a few uh, a few episodes where I've been looking at his Norwich Canaries at the Canary Room uh, and on our uh, Natives and Norwich Zoom call. So uh, Keith had mentioned he likes to see them scratching like chickens, looking for the food and being active and busy like that. So that's something really useful and trying to get them to, to, uh, to encourage that natural behaviour where you can. So in the winter, obviously, it's cold. The birds need more energy and they need those fat stores in order to survive the winter. That's why so few wild birds do. Obviously, the mortality rate in wild birds is quite high uh, in the winter months because there's just simply not enough food for all of them. But in captivity, well, we have control over that so we don't lose as many birds through the winter months. You are, you, you know, you may lose a one or two, uh, but let's try and keep that to a minimum as we do. So I offer a lot of fatty seeds. So safflower, sunflower, niger, linseed, hemp, things like that. It's really useful for the birds. It gives that, that energy and those fat stores that they need through the winter. So whenever I'm putting seed down for them to make them work for their food, well, I need it to be rewarding for them and I need it to be worth their while doing that. I don't want them spending all day to find uh, 
very low nutritionist seeds and um, it's just you know it's not worth it for them and then I don't want it to have an effect on them so I'm always putting these fat in, in seeds down gives them those fat storages gives them that energy that they're going to need for the winter to keep up with these colder temperatures and make sure that they survive comfortably uh, and they don't encounter any problems so that does bring me on to insects in the winter now insects are a lot of flying insects you don't see in the winter uh, they're all hibernating but there is always those ground insects so like i said mealworms uh, but also mainly if you keep soft bills obviously insects uh, are and live food is a, a major part of their diet uh, so do offer them that but for things like native finches i'll, I'll offer them some mealworms occasionally some are, are, are you know favorites of them they do really enjoy the mealworms and others like red pulse they aren't, they aren't too bothered about mealworms and that's all right uh, you know they don't have to be uh, but it's something that they wouldn't commonly find as much in the winter months so i don't overkill it it's not only is it expensive uh, but it's just not needed for them and, and a lot of them are seed eaters uh, throughout the winter months and then when you come to the breeding season you know your your general seed eaters like yellow hammers and things like that almost turned soft bill uh whole finches will almost turn soft bill taking loads of light wild food and then thrushes red starts stone chats reedlings anything like that well they're always taking insects so do offer more um but then just look at you know what are they going to be having naturally in the wild and how can we we put that in into what we do in captivity with them to keep them in top health keep them active and and keep them happy there's also just another simple thing which you need to make sure you do for your birds uh, but if you do keep birds for showing obviously like I do myself then I make sure to offer them two perches to keep them bouncing and give them that exercise you don't want the single one perch because if that bird can't fly about and move and heat itself up through the exercise then it may also struggle throughout the winter uh, so I always offer two so they can bounce perch to perch and that's more than sufficient enough they're happy just remember that is just for the show birds throughout the winter when we are doing that as soon as it's the last show end of january for myself they'll all go out in the flights they'll have loads of room uh, and, and loads of other things to interact with to get them fit ready for the breeding come april I have mentioned in previous videos that we have heaters in here i only have heaters in here when it's very cold uh, and that's just to try and take the edge off the frost so that our our, our drinkers don't freeze and crack and um, but other than that that's it for the birds that are out in the flights well that yeah they don't have heaters at all um when we do get very very low temperatures uh, and i'm talking a below minus five here then that's where i might start to be a bit concerned and we'll bring them into to make sure that they are warm enough and they're out of that remember to keep them out of drafts as well the birds need to get out of a draft because it can really be the difference between life and death obviously if it's super cold uh, you know if you're talking it's zero degrees and then you've got a really bad wind chill it's going to it's going to really quite uh, drain the birds very quickly and, and you're going to lose them uh, for the canaries and things like that as much as they're used to warmer temperatures naturally you know they're talking probably up to 40 degrees but i, I imagine that 20 degrees or 15 degrees is is a winter temperature temperature for the canary islands well for our canaries at least they're so domesticated now and, and, and acclimatized to the what it's like here in the uk that they actually do enjoy this colder temperature they're just like a native finch in that they could live in a fringe or live in a freezer without a problem and and i found that when in the past i've had snow come in the avery's while well, the canary is usually the first ones down to play in the snow uh, and i am deadly serious with that i've had it where i've had this before as a huge avery 14 by 10 then it snowed through the night and the first birds out the canaries and they're enjoying uh, playing in the snow essentially so so don't be worried about that if you do keep things like foreign soft bills uh, and more sensitive species like that then obviously you do need your heaters as well but make sure it's not that it's not the, just the heaters keeping them alive but it's also those fattening seeds and the fattening foods that they need to put those fat stores on to give them the energy they're going to need through the winter so just remember these are things I offer through the winter but these are the only things I offer through the winter. Obviously you want your basic feed mixes in there as well to give them that bulk that they're going to need. You're going to need baths in there. Yes it might be minus three outside but if there's some water that's not frozen over yet then the birds are going to be in it bathing and that's uh, you know that's that's the honest truth is that you do get that. You know I've had baths on two days ago it's two degrees and the birds are more than happy to completely drench themselves. So, so just make 
make sure that if you are giving your birds baths, I would say make sure they can get out of that draft because that can really seriously affect them. But other than that, just make sure you are offering them to them and they usually will readily take them. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and seeing how to keep your birds active and healthy throughout the winter months. We've got a few more videos coming up to, as notable. So we've got some new birds in, we've just sent the DNAs off. So I'm hoping that should be ready for the Christmas episode. I'm not gonna release it Christmas day for your guys' sake. I'm gonna release it on Boxing Day. So the Sunday, the 26th of December, it's gonna be out 9 a.m. rather than Saturday, the 25th. Enjoy Christmas with, with your families and I'll see you uh, on that Sunday. We've also got an episode coming out with Bernard Williams on the Natives in Norwich Zoom Room. We're going to be talking about breeding hawfinches. Bernard's bred multiple hawfinches, probably, you know, triple figures, I imagine, over, over the course of his lifetime and keeping birds. Uh, so there's a lot of experience and a lot of tips to learn from there. So make sure you change, stay tuned and you subscribe for that. Uh, and that will be on Tuesday at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Uh, and that will be going live. So hopefully you enjoy that as well. You'll pick up a few tips. And uh, just remember that we have got some special birds coming in in the new year. I'm not telling you what yet, but you're not going to want to miss them, I can assure you. So please make sure you're subscribed down below. Make sure you leave a like on this video so more people get to see it and keep their birds happy and healthy throughout the winter months. Thank you very much for watching. Merry Christmas.